So for anyone who knows me knows that I absolutely love primatology, and somehow after four years of an undergraduate education in anthropology, I've never read Jane Goodall. And this week, that's exactly what I decided to do. And spoiler alert, I freaking love Jane Goodall. And yeah. So in today's video, as you saw from the title, we are going to be talking about Jane Goodall's book, My Life with Chimpanzees. I'm going to be summarizing it and then giving some of my opinions and analysis. And guys, big spoiler, I freaking loved it. Really quickly, hello, my name is Olivia and I make videos about anthropology every single Monday. So if that sounds interesting to you, subscribe to the channel. But now on to the video. So first things first, I wanted to let you guys know that I did actually listen to the book My Life with Chimpanzees over actually reading a physical copy. And I did that using an app called Libby. This is not at all sponsored. It's just a library app where you can plug your library card into it and you can get a bunch of really amazing books for free. And part of the reason that I wanted to listen to the audiobook was because Jane Goodall gets to read you the story herself. And I just thought that it was such an amazing experience to actually listen to the author, you know, read her book. And it honestly just added a whole new level to the story. And I personally really enjoyed it and would highly recommend that if you come across a copy of the audiobook, that you listen to it as well. Also, there's a bunch of animal sounds in the audiobook, which totally threw me off at first, like chickens and chimpanzees, obviously, but um, I did get used to it, so I'm sure you will too. Next up, I wanted to talk a little bit about Jane Goodall. So, I mean, if you're here, you probably know who she is. Um, but basically, Jane Goodall is best known for her work in primatology and anthropology and was basically the first person to make huge steps forward in primate research. And the, I mean, the things that she accomplished in her career is actually wild. And of course, we're going to get into some of those things today. But as I did just mention before, she is most famous for her work studying chimpanzees in Africa. She studied a group of chimpanzees in Gambia and oh my goodness you guys I could go on and on about how wild and amazing these you know chimpanzees in her research were <laughs> and today she has founded the Jane Goodall Institute which basically funds further research on chimpanzees and it's a lovely time so I'm going to link that down below if you want to check it out but now on to the book that I listened to this week, My Life with Chimpanzees by Jane Goodall. So the book starts out with Jane as a young child and she starts right off the bat telling you how much she loved animals all growing up. She didn't like to go to school because she wanted to spend time with the chickens in the yard and the neighbor's dog um, and basically just wanted to spend time outside over being in a classroom. And from the beginning of the story, you can really see where her love of the outdoors Doors and her love of animals has really started. And Jane Goodall's dream was to go to Africa. She talks about this very early on in the book. She'd always wanted to go, and as she got a little bit older, she had the opportunity to visit one of her friends whose family lived in Kenya, and she boarded a ship and went to Africa. And this is really where the story of Jane Goodall and all her research really began. Now, during her time in Africa, we learn, and I had no idea about this, that Jane Goodall became acquainted with an incredibly famous anthropologist known as Louis Leakey. He also is married to Mary Leakey, Lewis and Mary Leakey. They are incredibly famous for some of their discoveries at Olduvai Gorge. And I'm not gonna get into that now, but if you want another video on it, please let me know. But Jane Goodall actually did excavations and archeology span with Lewis Leakey in Old Divide Gorge way before it was actually a very famous location. And I had literally no idea <laughs> that she was involved in archeology span with Lewis Leakey in Africa before she studied primates. But as it turns out, Lewis Leakey ended up being her connection and her, you know, he opened the door for her to study primates 
and more specifically chimpanzees in Africa. He was the one who basically helped fundraise all of the money that she needed to go to, you know, the specific region of Africa to study chimpanzees. Now she talks about so many of her wild encounters and experiences in the forest of Gombe. She talks about how she was in a plane crash and then had to swim across an like a crocodile infested river because that was the safest option of the things that were like available to her. She ran into many wild animals who could definitely shred her apart, but she survived those too. And then of course she was observing this group of chimpanzees all amidst these wild, crazy experiences. And something that I really appreciated throughout her book was, you know, you see from start to finish how she was a stranger to the chimpanzees. And as her research progresses, she became very, very close with the chimpanzees. They became incredibly comfortable with her being around. In fact, one of them even, you know, took a banana from her hand. And that moment she talks about how it really transformed like her relationship with the chimpanzees. She felt like she was starting to make a bunch of progress. And getting to hear not only, you know, Jane Goodall, the narrator, tell me this was amazing, but also just to like hear that these kinds of experiences are possible was so, 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 so cool. <laughs> Jane made some of the most famous observations about chimpanzees that will probably ever be made, dare I say. One of those observations being tool use in chimpanzees. So prior to her work, humans didn't know of any other species besides ourselves that were using tools. But Jane actually observed chimpanzees using sticks. They were digging them into these termite mounds, pulling them out, and then eating the termites that were on this stick. And this was a huge deal. Then finally, this book ends with a wonderful call to action, basically urging her listeners and her readers to, you know, just remember that we have the power to make an impact in the world too. And I loved the call to action. I felt very impacted by it. Um, so yeah, that was a little brief summary of My Life with Chimpanzees by Jane Goodall. <laughs> really quickly, if you have not liked or subscribed, definitely do that because again, I talk about anthropology every single week and it's super fun, but now, back to the video. Now for some analysis, just a little bit of my opinions and you know, what I took away from this book. And the first thing that I wanna say, which is very clear and apparent from this video, is that I just loved it. I have been meaning to get to Jane Goodall's work for so long, since college, early college, when I thought I wanted to study monkeys myself. <laughs> um, but I never got to it until now, and I'm really, really glad I did. And again, it was just so cool to read something from someone who I know has made such a difference difference in the world. The next thing that I really loved about this book was, you know, how tangible Jane Goodall's relationship was to these chimpanzees that she was studying. She's named these chimpanzees and each one, you know, has a very distinct personality and she tells us about some of these stories and these things that she's experienced. You know, one of the things that she talks about was there was this boy chimpanzee, I don't remember his name, who was very reliant on his mother, you know, so much so that he wasn't very self-sustaining in the wild on his own. And when his mother passed away, you know, he was so stricken with sadness um, and, and didn't know how to survive basically on his own that he actually passed away, I think it was three weeks later. Um, and you can see how so many emotions that we feel, you know, and things that we experience, the chimpanzees did too. Um, and she also talks about, you know, very specific males who were fighting for dominance. And again, they all have stories and personalities and it takes so much time and patience to really see that. Um, and it's so obvious to me that Jane Goodall put the work in. And I just love, love, loved hearing the stories of each of these individual chimpanzees, you know, and Jane's experiences with them. I just thought it was so lovely. Another thing that I really appreciated about my life with chimpanzees is that in no way was the story idealized, or at least it didn't appear so. I think when we read, you know, biographies or stories of people's lives or watch documentaries or whatever it is, it's really easy to idealize certain things. Like it's really easy for me to sit here and say, wow, she was so cool and such a badass and studied monkeys so cool and skip over everything difficult that also happened in order for Jane Goodall to get to where she is today. 
right? But she does not shy away from some of the difficult things that she experienced. For example, it is not luxurious living in a forest every single day, basically like camping every single night, you know, watching these chimpanzees, hoping that you'll find them, not having a ton of food. Like there's things about the day-to-day -day life that were clearly not easy. And so I imagine that that caused a lot of interpersonal struggle that she was able to overcome. And in addition, she talks about how people didn't really trust her as not only a woman, but an untrained woman in science. So when she, you know, made these observations about the chimpanzees saying they used tools and did all these things that we had no idea about, people were resistant to believe her because she was lacking training. Um, and so I believe National Geographic actually sent someone out there to document her and her research. And at that point, you know, people were more willing to believe the things that Jane Goodall was saying. But again, she doesn't shy away from some of the challenges of her positionality and just the day-to-day -day experiences. And I really, really enjoy when people, you know, talk about all that they've accomplished, but everything hard that it took for them to get there. So I hope you guys enjoyed my little reaction to reading, you know, Jane Goodall, the queen, <laughs> for the first time primatologist anthropologist i definitely want to read more of her work um if you guys have any favorites let me know down below um and yeah i think that's all i have this week so i will see everybody next monday all right you guys bye <laughs>